Shall we move into our top 10 games? Yes. Our top 10 two-player games. This is when we are going to tell you our favorite two-player games. I think we uh, will probably find Twilight Struggle somewhere on these lists. I can only yeah. imagine. Uh, that only makes sense to me. Um, let's get into them. Jesse, do you want to start or do you want me to sure. start? Sure. You know what I was thinking? Maybe we'll kind of go, you know, oh, I'll do 10. What's your 10? Then you do your 9 and then 9. We'll kind of, or however, however you want. Yeah, we'll just do, do yeah. our 10s, then we'll do so our 9s. I kind of did mine a little. I know you did yours a little a certain way. I, I, don't, I, I didn't actually look at your picks, by the yeah, way. Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, so I don't know yours either. We're um, be but I did mine a here. little differently. I kind of categorized them in a way, you'll okay, see. Okay, okay. Um, so I, I just want to start with... And Tom is also going to do his top three. Tom, should we wait until we get to our top three yeah. and then you'll chime in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The three okay. of us will do our threes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, again, this is the top ten two-player board games. So mm-hmm. I just want to start with chess. Like, it's okay. not that it's way even down there. Yeah. I, I love chess, but I kind of want to get it out there. It's like, yeah. Of I, course. I want to sort of focus on a little more modern board games, but I love, you know, chess and... Um, you know, all of like the backgammon and there's so many games I could put go Othello that are like classics. Yeah. Um, but, um, but yeah, so I'm going to start with chess. Okay. That's your number 10. That's my number 10, but number 10 is chess. I went with, uh, just happened this way, but I ended up wanting to do this. All my top tens are two player only games. Now there are a million games that I think work well at two, but I, I just, for me, it felt fun to focus on games that can only be played at two. These are not right. games that, you know, I think Marco Polo is great at two and four. I think, you know, Lorenzo is great at two, three or four. I think there's a lot of games like that, but that opened up the list too much for me. And I, I was more interested in what are games that are only two cannot be played with more than two. My, and, and, and I realized a lot, mine are a lot more quote unquote Ameritrash than I would have thought my top 10 here. Um, and we'll start off with a game called Warhammer Underworld Shadespire. Now Warhammer Underworld Shadespire is so fun. Here, now I love miniature war games. I do not have the time to put together 400 point Warhammer armies and put them on a table with painted terrain. And that's a whole, that's a lifestyle. Okay. That is a whole lifestyle, but I enjoy that experience. I enjoy miniature dice rolling tactical combat. Warhammer Shadespire is if you took the entire Warhammer experience and put it into 30 minutes with each side having three or four miniatures. I, I actually like dreamed of a game like this forever. I was like, I wish they could just take the board game experience of an hour at max game and give me that whole Warhammer army battle tabletop experience. And they yeah. really did. Warhammer Shadespire was, you buy Warhammer Shadespire, there are a couple different factions you can buy. You can just buy the faction you want and there are three or four minis that you don't have to glue them together. They snap together. You put it together in 30 seconds. You don't have to paint them unless you want to. They look dope on their own. And it comes to the little board that's a little hex board. And I put my three minis down. You put th- your three minis yeah. down. And it's a card-based game. Mm. Um, you are moving. You are taking actions. But a lot of it is upgrading your troops and doing cool things. It literally plays in 30 minutes. And it is so fun and so smart. I was blown away mm. by the design. It's like simple and clean and brilliant. Um, if that's what you're looking for, you can just start with the core box, but you can also just buy armies you think are cool. There is a, a different version of it called Nightshade, I believe. It's the same, uh, Warhammer Underworld's Night Vault. It's the same game. Warhammer Underworlds is like the thing. Shade Spire mm-hmm. was like season one. I guess like season two was Night Vault. Warhammer Underworld is what you're looking for. Okay. Um, get whatever, just basically buy whatever army you think looks fun. There is a tournament scene for it. It's huge in England. Uh, it hasn't quite blown up here, but it is. I know there's. they still are tournaments all over in LA, um, but it's like a massive thing in England, wh- which is where Games Workshop is. So everything there is a little bit bigger. That's my number 10. Okay. Jesse, what's your number nine? Number nine. Um, I, uh, you know, you can start guessing these, I guess. Uh, modern classic deck builders. Um, Dominion? Yeah. Well, I, I, I had Dominion then actually go, you know what? You know, magic, I think is... is Obviously, a great. Oh, that's not technically. Yeah, that that, that you are. You must build a deck in order to. Yes, right. Yeah, I, yes, I, I, it. yes, right. I named it after when I put Dominion. Then I swapped them because I like Magic better than Dominion. Yeah. But you know, Dominion is 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 you know you can play with more people, but mm-hmm. it's actually really great. As Just a made me realize game. I probably should have put Magic in my top two player games. Right. I love Magic. <laughs> right. Uh, but yeah, that that is a, a can't do much better. There's yeah. there's very few things in this world more fun, and if you haven't done it. Don't be afraid. I really recommend that some that you, one day you go to your local game store and ask when they do a magic draft. Yeah. 
You know, it's just the best time. You don't have to know anything. Someone will teach you the basics. You, look, if you want to win, you have to know some stuff. Yeah. But don't, you're not going to win. You go, you give them 10 bucks. They give you a couple packs. There's also you an etiquette to deck. it, though. What? There's an etiquette to it. Yeah, that but you, you can should, pick that you up in go, 30 yeah. seconds. Yeah. yeah. But it's so fun. And so I'll just go. Mm-hmm. Like, in my neighborhood, sometimes there's, there's one. I'll just, if I've got nothing to do on a Friday night and I can get out for two hours, I'll go. It's just fun. It's just a good time. It's relaxing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cannot do better than a magic draft. My number nine is a tiny little card game that I really love called The Fox in the Forest. The Fox in the Forest is a small box card game, uh, and it's a trick-taking game, uh, much like Bridge or um, what's another famous trick-taking game? I don't teach you. It's the only teach ones you? I think uh, of. But Bridge. Fox in the Forest is a really cool trick-taking game with beautiful art. Uh, it costs about 20 bucks. You can learn it in 30 seconds. I play this with my mother-in-law. I play this with my wife. I play this with people who don't play games. Anybody understands a basic trick-taking game, you can explain it really quick. You know, if I lead with a suit, you must play in that suit. That's the kind of game. It's Mm -hmm. like hearts, things like that. Hearts is the trick-taking game I was trying to think of. Um, But yeah, Fox in the Forest, fantastic. My favorite little box trick-taking game that you can play with too. Couldn't recommend it more. Cool. All right. Uh, My number eight is the category of two to five player board games that work surprisingly well with two players. Yeah. Can you think of what one might two be? Two to five player board games that work surprisingly well with two players. I mean, like, I was going to say three to five players, but this actually technically is two to five, but you wouldn't think to play it, but then you do, and it's like, wow, well, that really works. I found Le Havre plays amazing at yeah, two. Yeah, it does. It absolutely does. I mean, it's right that's around my, there. That's my guess. Yeah. And Le Havre even has a two-player version called Le Havre Inland Port, which is the two-player only variant, which is actually really fun, too. Yeah. Uh, but Le Havre at two is great. Yeah. Uh, I was going to say Agricola. Sure, which yes. Is, totally. Again, it's like an obvious no, choice. Yeah. But also, and also same, same Agri- designer. Agricola also has a two-player only version called Agricola All Creatures Big and Small, which is right. the, 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 the specifically two-player only version. Right. But Agricola on its own is great with two. Right. Um, and I think like Great Western Trail and... Um, Totally fine with two. Uh, great with two. Yeah. I mean, a lot of these great medium weight euros work great with two. Yeah. Lorenzo is great with two. Marco Polo is great with two. Madeira is great with two. Even some of these heavier ones. Yeah. A lot of these really heavy four player games work great at two and three. Uh, my number eight is uh, speaking of Uwe Rosenberg, this is a little Uwe Rosenberg game called Patchwork. This is sort of the game that started the polyomino uh, popular thing in his world. Um, he seems, Uwe seems really into these sort of polyomino. Polyomino is Tetris pieces. Um, you're forming them together. This is a game that can also be taught in 30 seconds. It's really easy, really fun. You are drafting little polyominoes and trying to build a quilt on your player board uh, while scoring the most buttons. Um, this is also a game that I play with my mother-in-law or my wife or any people who don't necessarily like games, but this is my wife's favorite board game of all time, Patchwork. This is, whenever we play board games, she goes, I'll play Patchwork with you. I was like, okay. I mean, I'm always down to play it. It's a fun yep. game. Uh, $26. You can get it anywhere. Wildly popular. It's um, quick. It's strategic. It's a, it's a very good game. It's a really good game that everyone will like. Even people who play board games, will, you will have a good time playing it. Which is also Uwe, right? Yeah, exactly. that is good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the Agricola, yeah. Um, and my, so my number seven is casual two-player games I play with my girlfriend. Yes. Can you guess what? I... Casual two-player games you play with your girlfriend? Oh, I have so many guesses, but I don't think any of them are about pro- appropriate for the podcast. Oh, Patchwork. How about Patchwork? Yeah. <laughs> is that right? <laughs> yeah. Um, and I also put Seven Wonders Duel, Lost Cities, Codenames Duet as sort of like honorable mentions. Great. It's, yeah. a, it's a great game. Um, my number seven, is that what we're on? My number seven is a two player campaign skirmish dungeon diving game called claustrophobia. Now claustrophobia right now had an original version that came out. Uh, Oh, I'm going to guess like 2012. Um, but I'll look it up real quick. Uh, it's by a French designer named Croc. That's how he goes by C R O C. It came out in 2009. It is a wonderful little two player game where it is one of these um, overlord versus player kind of games. So one person sort of takes the DM, I control all the monsters, and then you take the heroes. You control all the heroes, and only one person can win. Um, The game is broken up into into like eight or ten scenarios in a campaign. You can just play them as one-offs, or you can play them as a campaign. They are not balanced, which is really fun, (laughs) but like one side is definitely uh, uh, heavily... Uh, meant to win in each one, but it's really fun to sort of go up against the odds. It's, it's this game of like really heavy odds and there's this cool dice placement thing. So every turn you roll the dice and those are stats and you can place those dice on your player board to decide your stats that turn. Mm. So if you, you roll five dice, you have five stats. 
Okay, those are your stats this mm-hmm. turn. So you put the four in movement, that's your movement. You put the three in defense, you put the two in attack, you put the one in magic, and that's how that's what you get that turn. And it's a really fun thing. And then every time you take wounds, you lose spaces to put stats. Mm-hmm. So it's like, oh, now I have five dice, but only I can only use three of them. Uh, okay, well, I guess I don't need defense this turn. I don't know. Don't attack me. And it's really fun decisions, really cool. The game is wildly out of print. It's $200 if you want to buy it. Wow. But there is a new version of it. Croc made a 2.0. It's called Claustrophobia 1643. Um, The Kickstarter came out recently. You cannot buy it yet, but it will be coming to market soon, I believe. Um, Some people say it is much better in some ways, but also much worse in some too. It seems to be lukewarm. People who loved the original go, I love that they did this. I love to do this. I really wish they hadn't taken this out and taken this out. So Mm. it seems to be a little bit of a wash in terms of if it's better or worse. Um, but uh, people seem to love it either way. That's claustrophobia. Cool. Okay. Um, uh, I, do you have that here, you said? Uh, I sold it. You sold it. Yeah. I, I, fin- I beat it. I played it. Jake and I played it a lot. It was sort of Jake's first board game that we played together, wow. and I, uh, I got rid of it because it just was never going to get to the table again, I felt. Mm. Okay. Um, I didn't right. know it was worth $200. <laughs> I'll say that. Um, my number six is... Uh, Chess like casual games. Chess like chess like casual. Okay. Um I like guess. Suro or uh a Santorini. Santorini. That's oh interesting. There that is go. also my number six. Yeah. Hey, we're you tied go. on and You told six. me you introduced me to this game and Santorini you said chess, is this is gonna be your new favorite game. Yeah. And you were close. Yeah. Number it's a six. great Look, game. Santorini, I think this is the first time we've ever talked about it on the podcast, but it is one of those really amazing games. Mm-hmm. And it is very different than than every other game. It it doesn't really share that much of a pedigree with anything else, right? It's, yeah. it's an abstract game with a really cool asymmetrical power system. Yeah. Uh, you you each begin the game as a different god. Games take fifteen minutes, uh, maybe thirty at most, and you are laying pieces and you're trying to get your. You each have two figures and you're each building. Make a build and a move. Build, build yeah, and build a move. and a move, build and a move. And you're trying to get your player to the top of a building. So it's a third, level three. It's a level three, right. right. And then and you and you each get these god powers, which the different combinations of them make each game just completely new. Yeah. This game was hard to get and expensive for a long time, and then Roxley Games picked it up and did a mass market version of it. They lowered the component quality a little bit, but not to the point where I think it matters. It's still really nice. It's still a really nice version. I own that version myself. This is $16 on Amazon. That yeah. is a huge yeah. deal yeah. for a game that you will... This is, this is a game that if I, if I go on vacation, I'll bring this with me. Because this I, is a game that yeah. I'll play with Rachel. This is a game that I hope to play with Strider one day. This I is can, a game you can, I can tell anyone. you. I can give you. I can tell you right now. Uh, my brother Brian Donnelly yeah. lives, listens to the podcast. He's actually helped us out. He was the one that that said that Estates was available for. There you go. Uh, Thank you very much, Brian, for sale. Uh, he's got uh, seventeen kids. No, uh, it feels like that. He's got four kids. Okay, and uh, one of his daughters. Uh, I brought up. I, I always bring up games for Thanksgiving, and we play all sorts of games. He has a big collection of his own now, but I'm always bringing him new stuff to try. And uh, it turns out that girls uh, of this age uh, and boys they tend to love Percy Jackson. So okay, they tend yeah, to be that's the, the series of, of uh, Greek mythology children. The children, YA it, books. It, it, YA books, yeah, or pre YA books almost. Uh, so this game was. I've never. It was like it's all Greek. It was like the Beatles came to town. Right. They, these kids could not stop playing oh, this man. game, and one girl in particular, because the art is at dope, ten man. years old, only wanted to play it. She was just like, "This is amazing. This is the yeah. best thing ever." And now every time I go up there, first thing she says is hi uncle tom second thing she says is would you like to play santorini that's awesome it is yeah so so this is a great uh, adult and and child game yeah i have a feeling we're selling some copies of santorini at the moment it, it, <laughs> I, it is it's one of those games that while we're talking about it i want to play it yeah yeah <laughs> it's I, mean, fantastic I will game. say my honorable mention here is uh onitama yeah onitama's fun yeah, yeah. totally fun Which is- did we play that? Together? I feel like we played that together at a con. I feel like you had it or something. Maybe um, I don't think so. Okay, uh, your number five. Did you? You did your six because we yes. both had right. the same okay. six. My number five is a. Uh, it's a mid core duel. Mid core, mid weight. Uh, core. Um, I call it mid core. Whatever. Duel. Casual mid core. Duel. Um, and Seven... So let's just say it's a little more like Stratego. A little more like Stratego. 
I don't know, go? Okay, mm. let me say it's using your th- favorite theme. What's my favorite theme? Unicorns? Wow. Lord of the Rings. Oh, is it Lord of the Rings Confrontation? There it is. Oh, yeah, Reiner yeah. Knizia. Yeah. I've never played it. Isn't that Are crazy? Are you serious? Is it co-op or you no? You've got to be. No. No. It's not. It's, it's two players. It's One person weird. plays I've never the... played it. It's on my wish list. It's something I always oh, wanted man. to we'll have. Oh, man. We'll play it. Okay. It, it is, it for years. It is, it is like a... better Stratego. Oh, yeah, okay. It is. It's, it's fun. You're, you'll love it, yeah. I, and, right. and I play it with my son, and he's Came out in really the late 80s, I think. Is that right? No. No. no? It, it came out in 2000, 2003, oh, something like that. Oh, jeez. Okay. Why did I think it's much older? 2002. Wow. You have, to realize, no you have to realize Reiner Knizia's yeah. first game, I think, was Modern Art in 95 or oh, something okay. like that. Oh, okay. So, yeah. so okay. There just a different time. And my honorable mention is um, Legends of Korra, the pro bending arena. I've heard that's fun. Yeah, it's interesting. It's good. Yeah. You play with your kids? Um, we played it once. Okay. Sometimes he does that. He's like, okay, cool. We did the experience and then we're done. It's like, no, yeah. we got to keep playing it. So I, I haven't gotten back to that, but it's interesting. I'm not sure how much longevity it has, yeah. but I, I enjoy it. It's interesting. My number five is one thing, but would be another if it still existed. So my number five is, is uh, Keyforge, which is a really fun uh, two-player deck builder game. Yeah. Now, how Keyforge works is you buy a deck and you're done. You play that deck. There is no deck building. There is no meta. There's no building a deck. You buy a deck for $10. You open it up. You can never put another card in it. Each card is marked individually and the decks are built by an AI. It's a uh, unique card. It is a unique card game unique and game. each card is unique. It has a name on it that is only specific to you and no one else will ever have that card with that name on it. Yeah. Um, it's a really fun, really cool game. I own a bunch of packs. It's fun to put it together. I wish I had more time for it. It, is, it would be a great tournament thing if I had more time for that. You can just show up. A lot of these tournaments are fun. You just It's a $10 entry. You buy a deck, and you play round robin all day, and whoever wins, wins. Um, my number five would be Android Netrunner, which is my favorite Excuse me, two-player card game of all time. I played the pants off of Android Netrunner. It, it took over my life for probably six years. It was my obsession. I played constantly. I traveled to tournaments. I was obsessed with it. It's a dead game. I sold my whole collection. It's dead in the sense that they, they are no longer making more cards for it. It's also dead to me because I just don't have that kind of time anymore. That was, it just took over my life. The deck building, the meta, the staying involved in yeah. it. It is the most fun two-player card game I've ever played. I think it's a masterpiece. If they put out a box of Android Netrunner that had five balanced decks in it, I would I would play it constantly. I still have all my cards from it. So if you ever okay. wanna if you ever wanna go back, we can go Dude, back. I'll run your servers all day, my friend. <laughs> Jesse, what's your four? Uh, this is uh, co op crime solving. Two player co op crime solving, Mr. Jack. No, or uh, Oh you don't know Mr. Jack? I don't. Oh. Uh, oh we'll talk. Sherlock Holmes something detective, whatever it's called. Consulting. Consulting detective. No, uh, I haven't done those. Okay. Um, I, I have uh, Chronicles of Crime, which I reviewed oh, earlier. And, sure. and I would, I've would i been dying to play a detective. Yeah. Um, so I feel like there's probably So you think many... this works as a good two-player game? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. I know it could be more, but yeah, those are probably... Could be a one-player think... game. No. <laughs> God, you got to like... <laughs> you have friends, man. Uh, 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 yeah. All right. That's cool. My number four is Seven Wonders Duel. Now, Seven Wonders is a game that is best with seven people. Seven Wonders Duel is a game mm-hmm. that it can only be played with two. And that sounds like a silly design challenge that shouldn't work, and yet it is awesome. Seven Wonders Duel is really fun. It's really fast. It's tactical. It actually feels like you're playing Seven Wonders in yeah. a tiny amount of time. It comes in a little box. Um, it's really fun. It's also a game yeah. that you could pretty much teach to anybody. Um, I really enjoy it. Okay, so Jesse mentioned Seven Wonders Duel. I bit my tongue. I can't bite my tongue now. Yeah. I think Seven Wonders Duel is a bad game. Oh, why? I think it's a very bad game. I think it, I think it imitates a good game. In reality, I believe that the game plays you, and you don't actually play the game. Because each round, you are, you are choosing between one of two options. You can either do the, the, the thing on the left or the thing on the right. There's right? usually a few more cards than that available, but yeah. <clears throat> it, it's, it's relatively small, right? And once you've made a choice fairly early on, mm-hmm. you are there. There isn't really that many choices left in the game. It's like mm-hmm. I I have a uh, I now have a gray resource, and now I have a science. And for the rest of round one, round two, round three, eighty percent of my choices are are evident. Mm-hmm. It's like how would you not pick? A over B. Well, How would you not because pick A over B? To me, a lot of the game is is hate drafting, which is when you take cards that you know your opponent needs. I, 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 have you played with the expansion? 
No. I think the expansion adds a lot of really interesting things to it. Adds a whole other level to the game that I think is good. I, 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 do, I, not speak for, I do not speak of authority because I, I haven't played we'll try the it expansion. Sometime. I think the expansion adds some really cool asymmetrical <laughs> stuff going on there. But um, I don't know. To me, it's a game that is that you can, that you can learn quickly. And I, I, I really I actually like the choices. And I think it's fun to build. I, I, I have not experienced that. It feels like it's uh, playing it for you. Um, I can't necessarily disagree with that. I'll think about that next it was, time. It was in my it, category it is, of casual games played with my girlfriend. I'm always looking for more t- titles like that, but sure. I will say of the ones I listed in there, that's the only one I actually don't own yet. Oh, okay. I haven't actually bought it. Look, look, look. listen, if, if you enjoy it, then it's a good game. Well, but I I'm, just, saying, I don't I'm own, saying that I don't enjoy it enough, apparently, to have bought it. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. So, I just I think for me that, that the, the decision space of the game is a little bit illusory and that the number of meaningful decisions is surprisingly low. I guess. Oh, that's, that. that's what I would say. I'll look into that next time I play. It is wildly cheap at $26. It's a lot of game for $26. We move into our final three in which Tom Donnelly will be joining us. Tom, why don't you start with your number three? Okay, my number three. So um, my, my, my three are going to be uh, one light, one medium, and one heavy. Got it. That's the way I'm going to do okay. it. What are you going to start okay. with? I'm going to start with the light. Okay. Uh, Reiner Knizia did a game called Lost Cities. Yes, that was Lost Cities, list, yeah. the card game. I would have put that at my number eleven. Is it's amazing. First of all, best travel game ever. Yeah, it's tiny. Just put a the, deck put of cards. the board away. Just bring the deck of cards. Um, it it's sort of like it's sort of like competitive solitaire a mm-hmm. little bit in that you're you're putting down cards and uh, you're you're you have to building make rows of cards in orders by suit. You you can only put a number higher than the previous number. Exactly, right. exactly. Sequentially. And if they don't equal a certain number, all right. total, 15 or something like that, you're losing money on that expedition. Yep. I mean, it's not that you have to put them in sequential order. You just have to put it a higher one, right? Yeah, and correct. That's yeah. the gamble. That's why I cla- yes. clarified. Exactly right. Uh, there are five different colors, five different suits, and we're explorers that are competing. There are five different expeditions, and we're looking to get the highest points. And it is one of those games where a player could end up with negative points. It is mm-hmm. it be, because there are multipliers and you could do a two times multiplier on something. And then once you do that, you have to do that before you play a single expedition card in that, in that arena. And the expedition cards are numbers one through 10. This so. is one of Rachel's favorite games. Also my wife, this is one of the other games uh, other than patchwork. This actually patchwork kind of replaced lost cities because sure. she used to only want to play lost cities. And now, now she's like, if we're going to play a game, she it is play great. Patchwork. It's light. You can learn it in five minutes, $20 and, you, and you'll play Amazon. it. You'll play it three times in 30 minutes. Yeah. It's yeah. wonderful. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Great. Jesse, your number three, my number three is in the category of intense, moody co-ops. Jeez. Intense, Getting heavy here. Moody, intense, moody co-ops. co-ops. Gloomhaven. Co-ops. Gloomhaven. Yeah. Gloomhaven. And my honorable mentions are uh, Seventh Continent mm-hmm. and uh, Kingdom Death Monster. Gloomhaven is a great two-player game. Even better at one. <laughs> God. <laughs> I don't think so. I actually don't think you should play that with one person. Oh, jeez. That's great. I think that part of that negotiating and having your sort of characters. Sure. I, I think guess. playing that one player is, is essentially a cry for help, isn't that? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, it's it's how the American th- Medical I th- Association. I think it's actually how sort of most people play Gloomhaven. That's, I know, and it's sad. Well, it, that says more about the Bloomhaven <laughs> players than it does. <laughs> sure. My number three is, uh, we're going to get, my, my top three are all big, long, heavy, intense experiences, which is what I want out of a two-player game. If I'm going to sit down, look, there, of course, I, I enjoy a quick, light game, but if I'm going to play a two-player game, I want to put a cup of coffee on, put a, a pot of coffee on, I want to sit down, and I want to have four hours of an intense, awesome experience with somebody. And so my top three are all that. My number three is Star Wars Rebellion. Mm. I absolutely love Star Wars Rebellion. You may not think I'm the kind of player who would love Star Wars Rebellion. You are wrong. Wait, is that the the galactic one? That's the big galactic one. That is the one where you are placing your generals out on the map. The main thing is it's the search for the secret rebel base. Yes, I forgot about that. That should be on my list. You hide the rebel base somewhere amongst the entire galaxy and the other player must find it. It is so tense and fun and all of these exciting opportunities. The expansion makes it even better. I cannot recommend Star Wars Rebellion higher. If you have somebody that you can play regularly with and you are down for three hour plus games that really almost better than any other, as much in the way that Twilight Struggle brings the Cold War to life, this brings the original trilogy of Star Wars yeah. to life. Um, the expansion adds in some characters from, um, what was the one-off Star Wars movie that was good? Rogue One. Yeah, yeah Rogue it brings one. in some characters from Rogue One. 
Don't worry. There's none from Star Wars movies you don't like. No Clone mm-hmm. Wars stuff going on. Uh, but it is so fun and tense, and it has that great sort of sort of the same feel of uh, that feel of Hunt for uh, Hunt for the Ring or Letters from Whitechapel. But if you turned that into this grand strategy war game, um, I just can't recommend it enough. But you can't play it by yourself, Matt. You cannot. This is these are all two player only games. That's my list. Tell us how you feel about that. Just open up. I, I, I would not want to play this alone because I would be hiding from myself and that would be very hard to do. <laughs> I play I play with my son all the time. Really? Yeah. It's a great game, yeah, right? He, he loves it's, it. It's incredible. Cool. Okay. It's it's not cheap. It's about ninety bucks, hundred bucks you buy it in a store, ninety bucks on Amazon. It's a big, big box game. It's a big boy. Uh, and the expansion is another 30. I do recommend the expansion with it. I think it really uh, opens up a lot of the uh, options in the game. My number two is my medium weight uh, game, and it's my favorite one to talk about right now. Uh, Roads and Boats. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this is a splatter game. It's uh, best at two. Uh, the splatter game, some of these splatter games, especially Roads and Boats, is better at the lower player counts, right? It, Food Chain Magnet is famously beloved at two. It's it, and by the way, I would say that uh, Antiquity is also re- a really great game. Indonesia at, at cannot three. be played with two, right? No. Three minimum. Three minimum. Uh, so Roads and Boats is one of the first splatter games, and it it does everything splatter does well. In the game, it's a logistics game. You have a map of hex tiles that are almost like hand painted hex tiles, and you start off with five piles of wood. One pile of bricks, three donkeys, and two geese. And <laughs> from that, you are going to build an empire. <laughs> do I have to buy the 20th anniversary edition, Tom? Yes, you do. I do. Yeah, you, you, you really $100. do. dollars It's so good. It's right. so, so good. So I have to have it. Yeah, because... <laughs> ah, Rachel's going, So, oh, so in antiquity, right? You, you know, what, you worry, know in antiquity, you got, you got you know, <laughs> three pieces of wood, and you have two bricks, and you have this, this menu are you of... you like a tan? You can what? Sorry, I, I just heard. No, you can bricks buy, and wood. Yeah, mm. kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But here's the thing: in a splatter game, it's almost, it's almost a sandbox game because with those five pieces of wood that you have, you can build ten different things. There are ten different buildings that you can make out of that, and the bricks you can use to do seven different things yeah. with that. Right? What it what it really is is about figuring out. Okay. One of my woods is going to make a wood cutter so that I can cut more wood. And then my donkeys are going to go and they're going to get the wood and bring it to the wood cutter. Mm. But then the thing that, but then the boards that the wood cutter has, has made from the, from the logs, from the trees, I'm going to take. And with that, I'm going to make rafts so that I can yeah. travel down the river now. I think we played this. No, I've never played Roads and Boats. It is, it's phenomenal. I, it may be on the cards tonight then because it is so fun. It's so interesting. It's really good. The, the one complaint about it is, is that for the first half of the game or third of the game, it's kind of solo. You're kind of making your, you're making your own little duchy. Do you have to put the plexiglass over it and draw? I got, a, I got a piece of plexiglass for it, yeah. But wow. you don't actually have to do that because the drawing is just drawing roads. So you can grab little, little road pieces from... Really? I'm from a game that nobody plays well, anymore, like Catan, you Ugh. can take those road pieces and you can put them <laughs> Is in that between how you do the places. It? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I mean, I've over the years, people have given me 20 copies of Catan and said, well, <laughs> this, is, this is just a piece of junk. And yeah. so I have all these roads that well, we can sometimes, just use. Uh, when I'm like walking in like a bad neighborhood, I'll trip on them. And they're just, they're just thrown around like trash just lying there. Yeah, there's, a, there's an entirely this is me not responding. There's an entire homeless village in our neighborhood, which is constructed entirely out of boxes yeah. and boards of Catan. <laughs> Uh, no, it, look, it, it's, it's a, it's, I do, I have a, I went out and I got a, a properly sized uh, piece of actual plexi rather than the rolled plexi that they have. So I got a good, you know, I've, I've that's, that's how I bling out my games. I get, I get a piece of plexi from Home Depot to put over the game, but sure. uh, absolutely wonderful. I, I, I couldn't more highly recommend it and plays really good at low player counts. Um, I'm about to hit the button on ordering it. I hate you, Tom. Uh, it's okay. I feel like I've cost a lot of people. My number two? I've lost people, lot, cost a lot of people money on this episode so far. <laughs> I guess I have to lose some too. Uh, yeah, Jesse, what's your number two? So I feel this, this is a game that I feel like if me and Matt had a, had a, had a game, that's like our game, kind of oh. our favorite game. Oh. You know, you know. Oh. Um, but Epic War fought on two fronts. Yeah. This, this, we might actually swap. Your, our number ones and twos might actually swap, but um, War of the Ring. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I had the uh, with the original edition and which me, me too 
Yeah. Second edition is a, is much like the through yeah. the age of second edition. It is wildly improved. Yeah, it yeah. is. Yeah. yeah. It's a huge improvement. But man, I love playing that game in the, these a battle on two fronts, you know, and yeah. just the, the, the and multiple ways to victory. Yeah. Uh, it is so it is much like Twilight Struggle in the sense that it is uh, a huge upfront uh, ask. You it, beyond that. This is this is a hour long teach. This is a much deeper and more yeah. complicated game than Twilight Struggle. And you, in addition to that, it also has a deck of cards you must know. In addition to that, you must know all the things your opponent can do. It is a mm-hmm. huge ask. It will, you, you will take three to five games before you even feel comfortable playing the game. Yeah. But then, if you and one person went through that journey together, you have the best two-player so game great. ever, in my opinion. We'll get there in a second. But And, and, I, and I feel like... Um, you know, there's certain games that there are so many permutations, so many different avenues you can take. That's why you're talking. I'm just going to you talk. All, I'm going to do a little song behind you. Oh, dear. Dun, 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 uh, this, this is very distracting. Dun, dun, uh, <laughs> dun, dun, that, but and it can cause. Oh, that's not actually not working at all. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes there's so many. Thank you for doing that, though. That, I knew you needed that. Um, where there are so many different permutations and that can cause AP, especially in somebody like me. But for some, some reason, the certain games. It, it just works and and there and you're just in that flow state you know you might dip into AP at times but this is this is one of those games where I don't know it just it clicks for me and I love having all these different things but it, but these are the ones that kind of gel together and you know I just love it what oh that was so oh that's what you should have done can't hear you <laughs> what <laughs> Bro, no. is this the orc theme is that the yeah that's the orc theme exactly Good. Oh, that's really good. Uh, my number two is a game that we reviewed today, Twilight Struggle, my second favorite two-player game of all time. I think my prediction just you, came true. You are incorrect. Is. Number okay. two. It is my How number two. How dare you, number two. Favorite <laughs> two-player game of all time. Uh, my number two and number one are, are personal preferences. I'm not going to say that one game is better than the other. Uh, they're just in terms of what is my favorite. This is my second favorite two-player game of all time. We all know the reasons why. We talked about it for over 30 minutes. Uh, Tom, what is your number one Two-player game of all time. So, uh, not actually my number one, but it is, I said, light, medium, and heavy. Uh, So, my heavy choice is something that we really haven't talked about here, which is an entire sector of our game uh, business. An entire sector of board gamers play predominantly two-player games. Mm -hmm. And we don't really talk about them, and we don't really play them that much. Mm -hmm. War games. War gamers. Almost all war games are two-player Right, not all of them, but but I would say ninety percent of them are, um, and I can tell you, having played games like um, uh, there's so many Euro- Europe engulfed, um, Axe and Allies. Uh, I'm talking about war games, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, Breakout Normandy is one of my absolute all-time favorites. Uh, but in 1996, just the year after Catan came out, uh, a guy named Mark Simovich uh, made a game called uh, Hannibal Rome versus Carthage, and it was the first breakout card-based game, which Twilight Struggle is based on. It's based on I, this system. I just sold it at the last con, the new version of it. Oh, I still have mine. Good. That's well, good. I yeah, assumed yeah, you yeah. did. You had the, the brand new version it's that just came out. Yeah, I sold mine because it's just never going to get to the table in but, terms but of the absolute. Games, but right. the absolute best. My my actual pick is from 1999. Ted Racier did the the greatest card based war game that has still not been topped in 20 years. Battleline. Nope. No. Close. Good. Good guess though. Oh, uh, Commanders, Colors and Commanders. What's it called? Paths of Glory. Paths of Glory. Okay. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. World War One. Yeah. Trench warfare. Yeah. It is astonishing. Mm-hmm. It takes it takes what Rome versus Carthage did. It adds to it. Um, it I, I know for a fact that the the designers of Twilight Struggle were very were yeah. very very influenced by Paths of Glory. It is heavier. It is harder. It is it is meatier. But you feel like you are fighting the war, the Great War, the war to and end still all, holds up. The war to end all wars. It is. It's 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 a. I've never played it. I'd love to play. It. Yeah. We are going to play it one of these days. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. Uh, Jesse, your number my one number one game. I cannot might, imagine it what might it, could surpri- it might surprise do. you. Yeah. Actually, some people don't play this yeah. at, at, at two players, but I just Tiddlywinks. Settlers of Catan. 
That's not really true. So, I just love it Can't so be. much. Can't be. You're not, Two you're, players. You're just, I will, I'll play it by myself even. Right, sure. I'm try, I got to play into it. I, so I guess at some point. Yeah. So I want to trade you two Twilight sheep. Struggle. No. <laughs> Twilight Struggle is my number one. You're always trading. And, and I feel like that is the game that I feel like yeah. that me and Tom, like that, I, if I had to pick like this is our game. Totally. You don't have to, you know, share it with anybody. But I feel like now that's where I get you. 100%. You know? Yeah. Well, 100%. I'm excited to see how the, the rivalry value. continues on the digital. Keep me, <laughs> keep me posted on your win-lose streaks. Yeah. Uh, my number one of all time, you know what it is now. <laughs> my son is named Strider. My wife and I went all the way to New Zealand for our honeymoon. <laughs> Somewhere no. deep inside of me, I am half Gondor. Dead alive, the board game. <laughs> uh, I love War of the Rings so much. Uh, if I were to recommend one two-player game to you out there, if you had somebody to play it with, and it's a big teach, it's a big ask, it's a complicated game, it is War of the Ring, second edition. Do not play the original edition. Um, it is messy. Uh, it's not cheap. It's $70. There are multiple expansions. You don't need any of the expansions. The expansions are there when you want more. When you have gone through all the strategies for $70, you will have more than you ever need out of a War of the Ring game. Uh, I'll just briefly tell you a little bit about it. You must get the Fellowship to Mordor. Uh, you must get the ring into the, I'm going to stop the music. It's probably distracting. Uh, you must Do you think get, you're telling us anything that everybody doesn't know? No, I think they don't. And there are <laughs> multiple paths to get there. What, what do you think a person that doesn't know anything about War of the Ring thinks it could be about? Well, I've, well they might not know that it, it well, might. But they, what does it yeah. mean? You, what, you are, are you literally the on the map of, of Middle Earth and you must get the fellowship to there. And on the way, in order to get them to survive, you're going to have to split up. You're going to have to send people out. You're going to have That's different delicious. leaders of the group. You might have Gollum as the leader at one point. The forces of Sauron are on different fronts trying to guess where you are. It is a little bit of a hidden movement game, trying to figure out how you're getting there. There are about three or four viable paths to get there. Uh, each one is a different strategy, a different way to do it. Sauron has to figure out different things, but Sauron also has another victory condition. They, If they corrupt Frodo and they turn him to the evil side, they win. So you have, mo and, and you are always racing. That's your clock, because that's going to keep getting worse and worse. Frodo's corruption is going to keep getting higher and higher. Uh, so you, if you take your sweet time getting to Mordor, you will lose. But sometimes the slower route is safer as the, the shorter routes are more dangerous, more wrought with battles and fights. You will experience the and entire... And Shelob. And Shelob mm -hmm. is in there as well. You will, uh, you will experience the entire trilogy yeah. in a board game in three hours, and it will be amazing. You did great. I want to play it. Let's I want to play it now. Let's play it right now. <laughs> um, guys, that's our top tens. Two-player games. I feel like we collectively cost people to lose thousands of dollars i apologize in advance I don't feel bad no though in the matter they have to just have to that's, buy everything we tell i them think to buy. i think that's i think that's sort of what happens on this podcast Look, every hobby costs money i think yeah. our, i really do believe that board gaming does not cost nearly as much as most other hobbies. no no like, some people are into cars and boats and stuff we're talking 60 dollars a pop here exactly uh you probably cost me some money buying roads and boats thanks a lot tom 